India's plan to acquire six additional P-8I, Poseidon Maritime Surveillance Aircraft from the U.S., has encountered a major hurdle due to a sudden 50% price hike, raising the total deal to $3.6 billion. Originally approved in 2021 for $2.42 billion, the procurement was paused amid cost concerns and India's push for indigenous defense production. However, the Navy's need to replace its retired IL-38 aircraft and counter China's growing naval activity in the Indian Ocean region has reignited interest. Discussions now consider acquiring five aircraft instead of six. India already operates 12 P-8Is, stationed at INS Rajali and INS Hansa, which have flown over 40,000 hours. Negotiations remain ongoing amid wider Indo-US defense cooperation and parallel deals, including Rafale marine jets and Excalibur munitions. India is advancing its defense capabilities with DRDO developing Panaka 4, a next-generation guided rocket system with a range of 300 kilometers, a major leap from its predecessors. Expected to begin trials in 2028 and join the Indian Army by 2030, Panaka 4 is inspired by the Pralay short-range ballistic missile and will feature stealth and electronic countermeasure technologies to evade enemy air defenses. Developed in collaboration with Solar Industries, it will carry up to 250 kg warheads, making it ideal for targeting high-value enemy positions. The system offers a cost-effective, tactical alternative to ballistic missiles and integrates smoothly with current Panaka launchers, reducing infrastructure costs. It will become a vital part of India's artillery, especially after the lessons of the recent four-day India-Pakistan conflict, underlining the urgency for such precision systems. This marks a significant step in India's journey toward self-reliant, advanced battlefield deterrence. India reaffirmed its growing leadership role in the Indo-Pacific through its 2024 MEA annual report, citing its Sagar vision, which means security and growth for all in the region. Emphasizing a free, open, rules-based regional order, India strengthened ties with Association of Southeast Asian Nations and other key platforms like Indian Ocean Rim Association, East Asia Summit or EAS, and Mekong Ganga Cooperation or MGC. At the 2024 India ASEAN Summit in Laos, PM Modi elevated the relationship to a comprehensive strategic partnership. He also advocated regional stability at the East Asia Summit the following day. India enhanced its influence in the Western Indian Ocean as Vice Chair of Indian Ocean Rim Association or IMRA and observer in the Indian Ocean Commission. New initiatives included quick impact projects and blue economy programs. In March 2025, PM Modi unveiled the Mahasagar Doctrine in Mauritius, expanding India's strategic vision. Through capacity building, crisis response and digital cooperation, India seeks inclusive growth and regional security. India has decided to arm its upcoming Project 75I submarines with the extended-range BrahMos supersonic missile, marking a major leap in maritime strike capability. By 2025, ThyssenKrupp Marine Systems was chosen to partner with Mazagon Dock to build six HDW Class 214 base submarines, customized with vertical launch systems, to fire 800-kilometer range BrahMos ER missiles. These submerged launched weapons will enable precision strikes from stealth, transforming submarine warfare. India is also enhancing the submarines with Advanced Air Independent Propulsion, AIP, for extended underwater endurance. Simultaneously, older Scorpion and Kilo class subs will be upgraded to fire the lighter BrahMos NG from standard torpedo tubes. The combined upgrades will significantly bolster India's strategic deterrence in the Indo Pacific. On June 30, 2025, Reliance Defense signed a Rs. 20,000 crore strategic deal with U.S.-based Coastal Mechanics Incorporated to modernize and sustain over 100 MiG-29 jets and other legacy platforms. 
A key feature is the shift from relying on Russian OEMs to using reverse engineering and dual sourcing for parts. The joint venture will establish a large MRO facility in Nagpur, focusing on MiG-29 UPGs and Navy's MiG-29Ks. This marks the first time a U.S. defense firm is helping upgrade Russian origin fighters, potentially allowing integration of Western systems. The partnership supports India's Atmanurbha Bharat push, easing supply chain bottlenecks and setting a new model for legacy platform sustainment. As its presidency of the UN Security Council nears its end, Pakistan is preparing to hold an open debate on July 22, focused on peaceful dispute resolution. Chaired by Deputy PM Ishak Dar, the session will advocate invoking Chapter 6 of the UN Charter, calling for mediation and arbitration, without directly mentioning Kashmir, to avoid vetoes from key Security Council members. This move follows closed-door talks in May, after the Pahalgam terror attack. Pakistan also plans a parallel event, linking the UN with the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, where Kashmir may be subtly referenced. India, citing the Simla and Lahore Accords, maintains that Kashmir is a bilateral issue and is expected to counter any indirect references sharply. The strategy reflects Islamabad's attempt to keep Kashmir diplomatically relevant without triggering formal opposition. India's merchandise trade deficit eased to $20.7 billion in June 2025, from $21.9 billion in May, as falling crude prices, subdued gold imports and strategic sourcing helped cushion global volatility. A brief Israel-Iran ceasefire and increased OPEC plus output stabilized oil costs, while India ramped up Russian and U.S. crude purchases, reducing reliance on the Middle East. India's crude oil imports stood at 4.66 million barrels per day in June, marginally lower than 4.72 million barrels per day in May, according to energy analytics firm Vortexa. Gold imports dropped due to soaring global prices and low demand. Preliminary figures indicated a dip in gold imports to 30.56 tons in May, down from 34.87 tons in April, with expectations of a further fall in June. Coal imports remained stable, supporting industrial needs. The government also imposed anti-dumping duties on Chinese chemicals and curbed fabric and iron or pellet imports. Despite a drop in petroleum exports, analysts warned that any spike in commodity prices could strain the trade balance in coming months. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's upcoming visit to the UK is expected to be a decisive moment in India's quest for defense self-reliance, with jet engine co-development for the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA, at the forefront. The visit could catalyze the selection between Rolls-Royce and Safran, both of which have proposed developing a 110 to 130 kilonewton thrust engine, in collaboration with DRDO. India has insisted on 100% transfer of technology, joint intellectual property rights, and local production conditions, that both firms have now agreed to. The Cabinet Secretariat is currently reviewing DRDO's recommendations, with a high-level decision anticipated during or soon after the UK trip. This strategic move is driven by India's experience with delayed engine deliveries for the Tejas MK1A, highlighting the vulnerability of relying on foreign suppliers. While the AMCA MK1 will fly with imported GEF 414 engines, India intends the MK2 variant to be powered by an indigenous engine. The chosen partner will work with Indian agencies through the 2025 to 2034 period to complete development, aiming for limited series production by 2035. The collaboration is expected to strengthen India's aerospace capabilities and reduce dependence on global supply chains, while also involving key Indian private firms in long-term engine manufacturing. India has laid out stringent conditions for Russia's proposal to upgrade its Su-30 MKI fleet with advanced product 177S engines, demanding at least 80% technology transfer 
and on-site testing within India. This marks a significant shift in defense procurement, reflecting India's drive for strategic autonomy under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Initiative. The product 177S, offered alongside the AL-41F by Russia's UEC, provides major improvements over the existing AL-31FP engines, boosting thrust to 14,500 kgf, tripling service life to 6,000 hours, and enhancing stealth and fuel efficiency. India's demand for high-technology transfer exceeds previous deals and aims to empower HAL with advanced engine design capabilities for future platforms like the AMCA. India has also mandated that Russian engineers conduct engine testing domestically to mitigate geopolitical risks and ensure local expertise. This is part of the Rupee 63,000 crore Super Sukhoi program, which will modernize 84 jets with upgraded radars, AI-based avionics, and electronic warfare systems. The Cabinet Committee on Security is expected to approve the program soon, with initial aircraft ready by 2028. This firm stance signals India's transition from buyer to co-developer and could reshape future defense collaborations with Russia and other global partners. India's Ministry of Defense has instructed the Gas Turbine Research Establishment, GTRE, to finalize a foreign partner by the end of 2025 for co-developing a powerful new engine for the AMCA MK2. The engine, expected to generate 110 to 130 kilonewton thrust, is central to enabling key fifth-generation features like supercruise, AI-powered drone control, and directed energy weapons. While the initial AMCA MK1 will fly with the GE F414 engine, the MK2 variant demands a more capable and future-proof propulsion system. Two aerospace giants, Britain's Rolls-Royce and France's Safran, are competing for the partnership. Both have committed to full technology transfer and 100% intellectual property rights, aligning with India's Atmanirbhar Bharat vision. Rolls-Royce has proposed a variable cycle engine, leveraging its Typhoon and GCAP experience. Safran, though lacking experience in this thrust class, is building on its Rafale M88 legacy and promises close cooperation with GTRE. The selection process follows lessons from the troubled Kaveri engine project and aims to establish a domestic aero engine ecosystem. Following partner selection in 2025, the project targets core development by 2030, full engine readiness by 2034, and AMCA MK2 induction from 2035, potentially scaling up to power India's sixth-generation fighters post-2040. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.